So you've caught a queen. What do you do now? Well, stay tuned and you'll see what you can do after you've caught a queen and how to look after her. And then I will show you some of the queens that I've caught and what they look like in a same test tube setup. So you've caught a queen when you've been out and about looking for these queens. So you've probably got her in one of these uh, test tubes at the moment, or maybe a field tube that you've caught her in. So here we can see a queen uh, running around. She's dropped her wings. A little bit of a closer look at her here. Okay. So you can't keep the queen in a test tube set up like this at all. She's not going to live too long. She can't breathe in here. She's got no water. So what do you do with her? Well, you need to set her up in something that is natural, that she's used to. It's very similar to what she'd be like in the wild. So let's have a look at what you need to do. One thing to look at with this particular queen, and might have to do a video on this separately, is you can have semi-clostral or clostral queens. Now a clostral queen means that she uses her own body fat to start a colony. She doesn't need any external food source to begin with. So in this case, this queen is a clostral queen. So I'm gonna set her up like that. So what do we need to do to begin with? Well, just quickly, I thought I'd just show you this other queen that I caught as well. So this is a Campanotis or a sugar ant queen. You can see here she's quite a large one in the test tube compared to the other one that I've shown you so far. So again, this is a clostral queen. Very active, so we wanna make sure that she's got a nice setup so she feels secure. So the first thing you'll need is just an empty test tube. Okay, nothing too special, just pick whatever size you think would be best for the size of the queen. Now get some nice pure water and fill up the test tube. Now this can vary a little bit again based on the size of the queen. I like to fill them up to around about halfway. Now this water source is actually going to be for the queen to drink from and also to keep the humidity high in the chamber. The next thing you need to do is to plug this off, obviously, so she doesn't drown. So get a bit of a cotton ball, stuff that in the top of the test tube like so. Nice tight fit. We don't want any of that water leaking out and drowning the queen. And then just find something and just poke that cotton wool down into that water. Just like so, you want it to soak up all of that water, make sure that it's all nice and damp and moist. You'll have a little bit of excess water there that you can just shake out. The next thing you can do is just get another piece of cotton wool on some tweezers and just wipe out the inside of the test tube to dry it out. Okay, now the fun part, transferring the queen into this new test tube that's been set up with the water. So have a spare cotton ball ready because that's going to be the plug for the other end. Remove the cap and just put the ends together nicely like this. Obviously you want to choose a test tube that's a very similar size. And then she'll hopefully just move down nice and easily into the new test tube. You can remove that and just plug up the other end with the cotton wool. Now the cotton wool shouldn't be too tight, but you want to make sure that she can't escape, but it'll actually allow the oxygen to get in to her so she can breathe as well. She'll feel nice and snug in there and the humidity will be nice and high. Let's have a closer look at her in her new home now. As I mentioned earlier, this is a clostral queen. So she will live off her own body fat and reserves until her first workers hatch and then they will be able to collect the food for her to continue to feed her. Sometimes you do need to give them just a little bit of food, a little bit of honey or something just to keep them going as well. Now when it comes to a semi-clostral queen, 
that means that they actually need food while they're actually in this nesting phase and raising their young. So the eggs and the larvae, pupae and so forth. So you do need to give them a little bit of food. Here we have another one which is a uh, clostral queen as well. And I will show you um, a semi-clostral queen as well that you can have a look at. With a semi-clostral queen, you can put them in the test tube set up like this, but you will need to give them food as they go along, especially the larvae as well. So here we can see we've got a queen here that I've had for a little while. She's laid a nice little bundle of eggs there. Nice brood that she's keeping going, and I haven't fed her at all. Here's a bit of a closer look up at her. We can see there, beautiful, healthy brood. Okay, so now let's have a look at a semi-clostral queen. Here we have an R. metallica queen. Now this particular species, and along with all of these um, semi-clostral queens, you will need to feed them. So this one here, I've provided some protein for. So once you have all your queens all set up in the test tube set up, you wanna put them away somewhere nice and dark very realistic to their normal environment in the wild. They're secure in the nesting chamber and they're nice, nicely away somewhere dark. And then leave them like that and try not to disturb them too much. And before long, you will have some brood and then you'll be away. So thanks very much for watching the video this time, guys. I hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial on setting up a queen in a test tube setup. Please hit the thumbs up if you liked the video. And also, if you're not a subscriber already, uh, please subscribe to the channel. It'd be fantastic. Any comments that you want to leave down below, that'll be really good, and I'll try and reply to all of them. Thanks very much for watching, everybody, and happy ant keeping.